August 31st, 2012, Sony shuts down the online servers for all four PlayStation 2 SOCOM titles. I stream and upload a lot of content of me playing SOCOM and I get asked all the time, how am I playing this? I'm going to tell you how you can play SOCOM 1, 2, 3, and Combined Assault. I already discussed how you can play SOCOM Confrontation. If you're curious, then a link to that video is at the top of your screen and in the description below. Now let's be clear. This is not the actual setup instructions, but rather a guide to where you can go to get those instructions, along with a lot of helpful tips that you may find useful. SOCOM 1, 2, 3, and Combined Assault are revived and playable on the SOCOM community server, which is free to the public. You can play all of these titles on a PlayStation 2, a backwards compatible PlayStation 3, the Xbox Series 1, the Steam Deck, and on PC which is how myself and most of the community plays. To be clear, it's not plug and play and there's a little bit of a setup to all of these options, but it's not very difficult. The link to how to play is in the description below this video. Please don't comment how do I play. It's in the description section below this video. SOCOM 1, 3, and Combined Assault are easily playable on a PlayStation 2 and PlayStation 3. All you really need to do is enter the DNAS information and that's mostly it. SOCOM 2 can be played on a PlayStation 2, however it does require a free McBoot memory card in order to download a server patch. Without it you cannot access a server. These cards can be found on eBay for about $10 to $15, but I recommend doing a Google search of which PS2 consoles are compatible with a free McBoot memory card because it does vary. SOCOM 2 can also be played on a backwards compatible PlayStation 3, however it does need to be jailbroken so you can use a modified ISO of the game. All of these SOCOMs can be played on a Xbox Series 1 and the Steam Deck using the emulator. The most all-in-one way to play these SOCOMs is on a PC using the PCSX2 emulator, which is how most of the community and myself play. All you need is a controller. Don't get in your head over how complex this looks. Just follow the video and you'll be fine, I promise. If not, we can help you in the Discord. I recommend joining the SOCOM community Discord so you can chat with other players, get help if you have any problems, and see updates. An invite link is in the description below. Here are some notes you might want to know. You technically cannot play on a keyboard and mouse. It doesn't translate the way you think, so it's virtually unplayable. So you have to use the controller, which I think most people agree that PS2 SOCOM should be played using anyways. You can use a PS2, PS3, PS4, PS5, and Xbox controller. I recommend a PS3 controller because it has pressure sensitivity, so you can control how far you throw your grenades and have the ability to crouch, stand, and prone. And you can dolphin dive. You can do these things with the other controllers, but you have to map your controller in the emulator in a certain way. Instructions for how to set up a PS3 controller, or how to make any other controller do crouch, stand, prone is in the description below. In-game chat does work, but nobody really uses it because there's a setup in order to make it work on PC, which I am unfamiliar with. Most people just use Discord chat. Everyone plays on the same server, and it is cross-platform regardless of what you play on. SOCOM 2 has the highest average player count of all PS2 SOCOM titles. It averages about 40 plus players per night, and more on weekends. It has a pretty active competitive scene as well with pickup wars and clan matches. Combined Assault would have the second highest average ranging about 10 to 15 players per night. SOCOM 3 usually does not have any players on because SOCOM 3 and CA are cross platform just like it was in the server days so the S3 players just play on CA. SOCOM 1 has a small but dedicated community of players averaging about 10 players per night but on weekends can be more. There is an active anti-cheat and you will be banned if you cheat. Glitch in a public room, try to manipulate emulator settings to your advantage, act maliciously, and many more mostly common sense acts. I recommend reading the term the service in the discord but I promise you it's mostly common sense. You can glitch without getting banned, but you must be in a glitch no kill or GNK room. They are marked as such so don't do this outside of those rooms to avoid a possible ban. Ranks do work and your stats are tracked. Community features such as clans and friend lists also work. 
These are just a few of what could be an endless amount of questions, I'm sure. If you have any questions, then feel free to ask in the Discord. If you have any problems with setup or in-game, then please submit a ticket to the mod staff so you can be helped and do not direct message a mod with an issue. They don't like that. If you enjoyed this video, then please give it a thumbs up so that it can be recommended to others and hit that subscribe button for more content. Gia.